Hey guys, Jordan Bumble here on the Wolf of Wall Street. Time for Whiteboard Wednesday. And I got a great topic for today. And it's a bit unorthodox. And here's the deal, guys. I just gotta be honest, all right? So last year, right around this time, I think it was, maybe it was like, yeah, right around this time, right? I made a call in the cryptocurrency market, right? And I said, Bitcoin is a scam or it's, you know, being used as a scam. It's not a total scam itself, although I really wonder about that. But the point is what was happening around Bitcoin. It was like 20,000 when I made the call. I said, just get out of this thing. It was like 19, high 19s, right? It's going to, it's going to zero or close to it. And I received hate mail on Facebook and even in my inbox, people found my inbox and sent me like this wretched hate mail. People in there, like a lot of millennials in their 20s, all right? And I just gotta say one thing. I, you know, I hate to be a person that says, I told you so. I don't think it's really nice to be an I told you so, but I fucking told you so, you assholes. Not the people that got sucked in. I'm sorry, I wish you would have listened to me, but fuck you. Fuck you for the ones that wrote to me that I'm an asshole, I'm this, I'm trying to profit. I was just trying to help you, you morons, okay? It was so obvious to anybody with half a fucking financial brain, anyone that knew anything about manipulation or bubbles or had any experience in the market, this was going to have an unhappy and really bad, and you have not even begun to see the end of this, guys. So if you're still in this at 4,000 and 100, whatever it is, 4,100, it's gonna go, it can go to five dollars. It can go to 30 cents. I don't think you understand that right now it's finally crashing. In the last couple of days, it was thousand down, thousand. When something really crashes, it crashes hard and you can't get out because there's no volume. It's, it just dries up. And now you're hearing that the US Justice Department is investigating Bitfinex and the whole thing with Tether. I was saying this guys a year ago and you could have saved so much money and I got literally hate mail. I met people calling me a scam was and this. And, and, and you guys, and, and stop being stupid. If you're still in this Bitcoin, get the fuck out. Enough. It is not going to work. It's a scam. I told you this at 20,000. I told you this at 16,000. And I was called, an, you know, names like you can't believe. I said it at 9,000. I said it at 6,000. Now it's 4,000. It's, the bottom is zero. Don't you get it? There is no value. There never was any value. And what was happening is you had a few people doing these ultra high predictions, like it's going to a million dollars because once it got over like 10,000, the only way to keep the suckers in seriously was to make outrageous projections. Things that were not based on any fact or is all fantasy. All right. So what's whiteboard Wednesday about? I'll tell you what it's about. It's about bubbles and why they happen and how things really work in the market. Now you guys know, listen, I have a program right now. It's in sales and persuasion. All right. And I've been having mass success with that, but I want to deviate from talking about sales today because I want to do you all a favor because you need to understand because this is not the last bubble and by the way there might be another dead cat bounce with Bitcoin where they'll try to sucker you back in okay because they'll get it they'll, they'll manipulate it back up again to maybe 8,000 and people think oh it's going up again okay this thing is over okay it's over it ain't coming back it has no value. There never was any value. It was fucking fantasy. And everybody who really knew anything about finances knew it. Okay? The people who, were, who by the way, any, any major financiers that were saying it was going up, they probably in and out. And if you think just because Goldman Sachs said they're going to start trading it, that's because they make money trading shit. Not, not to, I'm not criticizing Goldman. The point is, I can criticize it for others. It's not that for sure. The point is like they were trading mortgages. And they created the products that went to zero. That's the thing they will, they were along those products. They're brokers. So when you hear things like this, oh, Goldman's dipping their toe in the water, that means it's gonna get worse. Because now you have very smart people who are in there betting against you. So let me explain how things happen here. Why these bubbles occur, what is required, how I knew, and how you avoid this in the past, in the, in the future, okay? Watch. There are two aspects of any manipulation, two parts to it. People always focus, they created buying, they created buying, they're creating buying. That's only part of it. So in other words, step one of any manipulation is you need to have buying, create massive buyers. Okay, and I'm, I'm, I'm not even proud of the fact that I know this better than anyone in the world that's probably alive today, okay? But it's true, I do, okay? Because back in my youth, 
okay? I wasn't as ethical like I am today. I'm a really ethical business person. Back then, I just wanted to make money. So I mastered this art, okay? So I know about this, and you know I know about it. So all you people who are giving me hate mail, fuck you, okay? But here's the truth how it works. Buying, okay, massive buying, is at the heart of any manipulation to create people who get involved with this fear of missing out, they call it, F-O-M, fear of missing out. You get greed in there, okay? You, and you have, guarding the whole thing is called the greater fool theory. In fact, Danny and I back then, you know, we thought we, 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 thought we invented it, how about, I'm sure we didn't, we used to call, well like it's the, the whole thing was based on the greater fool theory, meaning that what is something worth it's worth whatever a fool greater than the person who owns it will buy it at. Does, who's the greater fool? Well, if you buy it at 100, well, if there's a fool who will buy it at 102, they're the greater fool. That's what it's worth. The greater fool theory. Okay? And I emphasize the word fool because all of these things, I don't have the worst writing in the world, all of these things are essentially in the absence of intrinsic value. Figure out what Warren Buffett does. I think it's the opposite, you get it? Warren Buffett's the ultimate long-term value player. He looks for things with intrinsic value, that have va brands, okay, cash flows, things that you can, you can touch and feel and that make sense. And then think of Bitcoin, which is the exact opposite, zero intrinsic value, nothing you can, everything bad about it. But at the manipulation side, it was all about creating massive buying. How'd they do that? These, this moron with the hair up to here who was all over Facebook till he threw him out, telling you about he's the crypto wizard or genius, all this shit, these phony ads they were doing, all these posts, people freaking out on me when I was calling fraud on the whole thing because what they tried to do was drown out the negative voices and make these unrealistic projections and they had these clubs around the world saying how the bit, you know, putting your money was so much shit going on with, with Bitcoin, these conventions with, with, with Lamborghinis, Paul. what a bunch of shit. Okay, so all that was meant to drive buying and they use the power of the internet the same way I use the power of the phone and the straight line system back when I was, was in my youth and I used it in not the most ethical way. Now I only use it ethically, right? But the point is that's the first part of manipulation but not the only part. Just as important as creating massive buying is number two, withholding supply. And this is the key which most people don't get. It doesn't matter how much buying you create unless you also withhold supply. The reason I knew for sure, besides all these other things, but the main reason I knew Bitcoin was a scam was because 95% of it at one point was all held by a few players in large blocks and no one knew who they were. It is the classic example of a scam when you have a very few buys, very tightly held most of the float. It's called the float. In other words, it doesn't matter what the cap of Bitcoin is, how much, it could be a hundred billion dollar cap, but if there's only a hundred million dollars in the float free trading, the rest is being withheld in tight hands. That's ripe for manipulation. So what happened with Bitcoin is, while well, you'd read about this is what the value of the market is, what was actually the free trading, free trading Bitcoin, Okay, it was very, very small. And what you saw was all this intra-trading, people trading amongst themselves. We call that in Wall Street, painting the tape. Having these one where one person sells to his friend and they keep escalating the price up so it looks like it's going higher. And all the, the novices, the suckers, I hate to say it, get in because they have this fear of missing out, the greater fool theory. And they hear all these people online saying, you're gonna get rich, you're gonna get rich. And everyone starts putting their money. Their money. And I knew, like when I was, you know, call for an Uber, a black Uber, and the driver finds it home. Oh, what do you think of Bitcoin? You know, it's over. In the same way in the mortgage crisis, when I'm getting my hair cut and my haircut is saying, I just flipped my third house. I'm like, and there you go. Okay, when the haircutters and the drivers and the bartenders are all getting involved in the industry, you know, it's over. In other words, everybody jumps in and tries to make, make money at the very end. That's, it is so, these are b basic, obvious signs of a bubble. They could not have been more clear with Bitcoin, all right? And people were accusing me that I'm trying to, I'm, I'm long and I'm trying to, I mean, I can't even believe the insanity of what people wrote to me with Bitcoin. And I'm just telling you, it's not over, it's going lower. It, it, this, what you don't realize is that it could go to literally zero or two cents. There's no value. The governments would never let it have value. 
They were never allowed something to exist that had the potential to be used for money laundering. It's insane, the whole thing. It was a fallacy, and then it was perpetrated on you by a few people that started that have realized they could keep the supply very, very tight, create massive buying online through the internet and these clubs, a lot of unsophisticated people, all right? And poof, look where it's going now. It's going to zero, so if you're still in it, I urge you to get out. I don't own any, I never, I have never owned one freaking penny of this stuff. Not even a fraction of a penny, okay? Of any cryptocurrency, because I knew they were toxic, okay? One day, perhaps, when a government gets behind the crypto, maybe it will work. But I'm not even convinced that it even makes any sense, that it's more efficient. You know, blockchain technology is a different story. There are some uses for blockchain, okay, of distributive ledger, so to speak. But with this whole crypto thing, with inflation, you understand that Bitcoin was no more useful at 10,000 or 20,000 than it was at 1,000. There was no reason for it to go up. It was pure manipulation. It was being driven up by withholding supply and creating demand. That's two. Now there's one, I don't wanna, well, I guess I'll switch the page here for Whiteboard Wednesday, right? Ready? Number three, the third aspect of a manipulation. It's what's called a dark market. Any time you have a market where you cannot have transparency, where you really don't understand who the buyers and sellers are, there's no transparency. It's gonna be manipulated. It just will be. This goes back to back when I started in, on Wall Street. We had what was called the pink sheets. Remember from the movie, the pink sheets, right? These trend the pink sheets. Then you had the OTC bulletin board came along after. Even NASDAQ before they got their act together. When you can't see who the buyers and sellers are in real time, and though exactly with Bitcoin, there was like 10, 20 different exchanges. You never freaking knew. It was worth, it was worth 12,000 in Korea and 8,000. So I mean, that's not a real market. You understand? For instance, back when you had junk bonds, remember the movie The Big Short? When they were, I mean, I, I, the uh, mortgage, junk mortgages, right? Well, The Big Short, right? He, the, the bid it was fictitious. It was a dark market. There was no real bidder offer on an exchange you could see. It was by appointment only. Go back to the same thing for junk bonds. You didn't really know what was going on. It's a dark market. Without a full trans fully transparent exchange where you could see the buyers and sellers in the real time volume, there will always be, always be manipulation and fraud because that's how human beings are. Not all of them, but in any market where it's a dark market, you will find, because people get attracted to it because they know they can get away with it for a while. You get it? So as soon as you, when you're in a situation and you can, if you can't, if there's no exchange that's heavily regulated where you can see exactly what's going on with buyers and sellers in one spot, it's gonna be fraud. Because people will cut, they'll dive in, they're always looking for the latest scam, all right, and poof, and they just make it into a fraud. That's why I said, well, I really, I'm not gonna say Bitcoin itself is a fraud, but it's being used as a fraud. All right, now, and I, again, I hate to make this whiteboard Wednesday, but it's about fucking time that, you know, people open up their eyes if you haven't already bailed out in this shit. It's, it's worthless, okay? It's worthless. It's, just think of the energy drain. So anyone with any, any of this much green, you know, bone in their body would say, what the fuck is this stuff? It's crazy. They're using more energy than freaking Iceland to make a coin. Hello? It's craziness. So what's the lesson here? Okay, the lesson is, is there are no get rich quick schemes. But there is only one way to get rich in this world. And that's quick. You have to get rich quick but not through a scheme. You see, the world's far too expensive to get rich slowly. You'll go broke in the process. The way real success works is you work really hard and you don't get the result. And then you work really hard, you don't get the result. You work even harder, you still don't get the result. You work even harder still, you don't get the result. Then all of a sudden, that one last piece of the puzzle falls into place and bam, you soar to massive success and get rich as crosses. And people say, well, look, that was an overnight success. It was instant wretches. Yeah, after two years of really hard work. Understand this, in real success, when I mean getting rich quick, what I mean is that as you work your ass off, you're not seeing the result, but you're making progress. Remember my 
whiteboard Wednesday from last month, two months ago, you're below the water line. You're invisible. That part of the iceberg that's below the water. You get it? And then finally that last distinction, that last piece, that last change you make, and poof, you sort of sex. The money comes pouring in. People think, oh my God, he got rich overnight. No, you did the work. That's what I mean by the only way to get rich is quick, but by working really hard for a while and lining up the elements of success. When I teach people the straight line system, when I teach entrepreneurs, the reason I have so much success is because all I'm doing is, is lining up the elements of success for people, showing you what you need to know, what you need to do. That's why I don't say choose this business. I don't give them a biz op and say, you can oh, buy my box and get, no. I teach them to grow themselves, to learn the necessary skills to success. Because once you have those skills, you will get rich. Might not be today or tomorrow. It takes a lot of work, but you will get rich. You will get the life you want because you invested in yourself. You grew yourself. And the universe, nature, whatever you want to say, it abhors a vacuum. So if you become really big like that, full of you know, open bucket of skill, money will have to fill it. You get it? You still don't always see the result right away, all right? Now, I love you all. I didn't want to give all on a rant like that, but honestly, I have a little bit of anger left over from a lot of douchey people who said things, who, who, who looked at my past, by the way, and tried to use my past to discredit me. One bow tie douchebag on, I think it was on Fox, came on, or on whatever, you could look him up, and he, he said, what is this guy saying that Bitcoin is a scam? Who is he to say that? How does he know? And of course, you know, this guy probably was long it and, you know, buried many people who fucking listened to this guy. That pisses me off, okay? You know what? Many people, I'll tell you why, because me, it doesn't bother me in the sense that when people say bad things about my past, I don't let it disempower me. It doesn't stop me from achieving what I want in life. But people will say things to you. They'll try to discredit you. They'll tell you you're not good enough. You don't measure up because something in your past that you did is haunting you or that you don't come from the right family, the right part of the world, the right country. You don't come in the right caste if you're an Indian. So you have a lot of Indian fans, whatever it might be that because of something in your past, you can't have the life you want. Now, fuck those people, those dream stompers. Get them out of your life. So while a douchey bow tied bastard like that, that said bad things that be on there, yeah, I, I laughed it off and I kept going because I know inside what I'm capable of, I want you to feel the same way too. Don't let those naysayers, you know, it's funny about the internet, it's very easy to hide behind the internet and make a post and call someone else an asshole and be so negative. That's why I really try. I don't go out there and, and, you know, and speak negatively to other speakers. It's very rarely someone's going to really piss me off to get me to do that, okay, or attack me first. But the point is, is that it hurts other people when you, go, when you speak negative and people hide behind the internet because they're, they're bullies online and they're cowards in person. Tell me to my face, okay? That's a different story. Bottom line is this, you are capable of greatness no matter where you are in your life, no matter how low you fall on the totem pole, all you gotta do is put one foot in front of the other and start learning and growing and investing in yourself, grow yourself as a human, become more educated with the skills of success, become a master closer, become a master marketer, learn the rules of entrepreneurship, and you can achieve whatever you want in life. It doesn't happen overnight. Because there's no get rich quick schemes, but you will get rich quick once you've done the work and once that last piece of the puzzle comes into place. So if you're still holding Bitcoin, just enough. Go back to the real fucking world. There's so many ways to get rich. We live in this amazing world right now. It's ripe for the taking. You see me advertising on Facebook all the time. It's such a great platform for advertising. There's LinkedIn, there's Instagram, there's Google on YouTube. There's so much. I can help you or go to anybody if you're having trouble struggling. But don't try to go it alone and don't go for these stupid, moronic, so-called analysts telling you that it's going to go. Still, this one guy, Tom Lee, it's still going to 20,000. What is wrong with this guy? I mean, honestly, he's a respected guy. I don't get it. Like, I mean, he was saying he was going to a million. Really? I mean, whatever. Anyway, he's a legit guy. I'm sure. I don't think he's anything. He just probably had it wrong. Small people can be wrong once in a while, okay? So I don't want to denigrate the guy. But don't fall into the trap. It was always shit, and it's still shit. All right? I love you all. White Water Wednesday. Next week, I'll be back to sales again and persuasion and business skills. But that had to be said. And avoid these dark markets. 
Watch when people are withholding supply. Check out how much supply is really out there and don't fall into the false buying, the bullshit, the, the come on lines. Be careful with your money. We work hard, all of us, to make our money. Be responsible with it. Save it, invest it wisely, not in bullshit like this. I love you all. Have a great week. And also, by the way, happy Thanksgiving. To those in the United States and to everybody else, take care. Those fuck yous are only for the morons.